Welcome to another episode of InRange. You know, we live in a world filled with information, some of it good, some of it bad. And when it comes to the topic of self-defense, sadly, we find that a lot of times it falls onto the side of bad. Not only the information, but the products themselves. In fact, some self-defense products are worse than not having anything at all. And frequently, a lot of these products are targeted towards women. Now, I'm not the right person to be giving reviews on those products. However, my friend Annette Evans and her project on her own is exactly the right person to be giving reviews on that type of product. And that's exactly what we're launching today is a new series here on InRange, Patreon supported. A lot of these products that we're going to be buying and reviewing are funded by you, the viewer, as well as the equipment and video equipment to do this. But Annette is an awesome person. She's a competitive shooter, martial artist, and general training junkie. And she's been doing this project on her own in which she looks at some of these some of this information, some of the legend and lore, but also some of the actual items themselves, and then gives a rating, uh, one to five. One is terrible, five is good, um, in regards to is this something that actually would help you as a person in need of self-defense. And so what we're going to start with today are stun guns, because there's a lot of legend and lore around stun guns. But in the future, you're going to see a lot of other things, knuckle dusters, tasers, etc., firearms as well. So I'm going to let Annette introduce herself, and in future episodes of On Her Own, it's going to be just Annette, because I want this to be her voice. But I wanted to introduce you to her in the audience and tell you about this exciting new project. And I want to thank the patrons for making this possible, because... You're enabling us to buy these products to find out whether they actually have any merit or not. My name is Annette Evans and I am the voice behind On Her Own, where we explore what it means to survive and thrive as women, people who can't always count on having help to navigate the world. My background is in high level competitive and defensive shooting with a heavy side of combatives and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu which means I've spent a lot of time thinking about how to get myself out of violent situations, whether that means walking and talking my way out of danger or using weapons in my hands to force my way to safety. Beyond just feeling safe, I want to be safe and I want to help you be safe too. One of the ways I'm doing that is through this series where I take a hard look at the products and techniques that are marketed to women to see if they're actually effective or if they just exist to take our money and make us feel like we've done something. Stun guns arc electricity between two probes located an inch or so apart, often making scary zapping noises as they do, like this. Many stun guns come with safety features such as disabling pins to prevent the tool from being used if it's taken away from you, or are combined with additional tools like flashlights. Folks who recommend them claim that the sound will scare some potential attackers away, and the rest can be stopped when you press the button and shove the probes against them to cause a painful shock. Kind of like this. You can also reverse the order, which looks a little bit like this. It's important to distinguish between a stun gun, which works like this, and a taser, which is a device that launches two probes that are attached together with a wire. Those probes attach to the target and electric current pulses between them. And if everything works correctly across a major muscle group, the current causes the muscle to contract, making it so that the targeted person can't control their movement voluntarily. Taser, taser. There you go. The confusing part is that sometimes tasers can be used like stun guns with a technique called drive stun, where the taser device itself is pressed against the person while electricity is running through probes located on the device. Sometimes people talk about tasers when they really mean stun guns. The distinction is that tasers fire probes and stun guns require contact in order to work. Tasers have some unique issues that aren't part of what I'm talking about in this episode where we're exploring just stun guns. So um, as you've seen, in reality, they aren't actually super painful and I'm just doing this on bare skin. The effects are even less of the probes have to work through clothing. This here is bad guy one. My followers on her own have already met him. Much like me, he's a BJJ blue belt and a graduate of multiple shiftworks classes. But he's got about 30 pounds and superior male strength on me. I'm going to attempt to defend myself against a grab attempt from him using only this stun gun. Wait, I gotta make it work. Using only this stun gun.
right. Thanks, bad guy one. Sure. Um, I'm glad I finally got away from you. <laughs> First of all, how did it feel? Uh, well, I noticed it. Okay, that's good. Uh, t-shirt, bear skin, pants. Less through the pants, t-shirt, bear skin. Um, honestly, it was better than you hitting me with a training knife. So... I, if you had to pick a weapon, I would say a blunt training knife was better than that. All right, so it didn't really hurt you. It didn't really bother you. It was obnoxious. I noticed that it didn't really change anything about how you were trying to keep me under you. Yeah. Or to keep me under control. Um, at one point, I started using the techniques that Cecil Birch teaches in media action jujitsu to try to turn towards you, to try to get my legs between you and me so I could try to get up off the ground. And that's really when everything seemed to turn. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the difference was when you started really using your jiu-jitsu, it started working. Hitting me with that thing, it was not a force multiplier. And it felt like I got you some pretty good times oh, yeah, when you, you did. were right behind me. You, you got me in the side, you got me in the leg, you got me in the arm repeatedly. Um, what about the sound? Did you hear it? I could hear it. What did it make you feel? I mean, it kind of made me giggle. Also, I'm just chatting with you here while I'm using the stun gun on myself, and I'm not amped up on adrenaline like if I'm actually fighting. That alone can make pain less of a factor to an attacker who wants to hurt you without getting into whether they're on drugs or have an altered mental state that changes their perception of pain and how much they care about it. Besides, not everyone feels pain the same way. So just because a stun gun might be really painful to you or someone you know, doesn't mean it's going to feel that way to your attacker. And then even if they really think the stun gun hurts, they have to decide that they want the pain to stop more than they want something else, like your purse or even your body. That's why pain compliance, which is what stun guns offer, isn't reliable. It assumes that you're able to inflict enough pain to be noticeable, and that the person you're inflicting that pain on cares. And as for the scary noise aspect, you can decide for yourself on whether or not it would make a difference. I'd suggest that it doesn't though. To make it work, you'd have to make the noise early enough for the attacker to notice, they'd have to be able to hear it in the environment you're in, and they'd have to be afraid of what that sound promises. Considering many criminals don't think having a gun pointed at them is a big deal, I'd lay my odds on a stun gun noise not being a big deal either. So my final verdict on stun guns, three on her own birds. It might help you if you're attacked, but it's not likely to be very effective. For your money and your effort, I think you can do better. And in today's age, we can and should demand better.